FCC Commercial Element 1 Question Pool. Sub Element C, Equipment Operations, six key topics, six exam questions. Key Topic 13, VHF Equipment Controls. Question 1, what is the purpose of the INT-USA control setting on a VHF? C, to change certain interna international duplex channel assignments to simplex in the U.S. for VTS and other purposes. Two, VHF ship station transmitters must have the capability of reducing carrier power to A, one watt. Three, the dual watch DW function is used to D, listen on any selected channel while periodically monitoring channel 16. Four, which of the following statements best describes the correct setting for manual adjustment of the squelch control. A. Adjust squelch control to the minimum level necessary to barely suppress any background noise. 5. The scan function is used to D. Sequentially scan all or selected channels. 6. Why must all VHF distress urgency and safety communications, as well as VTS traffic calls, be performed in simplex operating mode. B, to ensure that vessels not directly participating in the communications can hear both sides of the radio exchange. Key topic 14, VHF channel selection. Question one, what channel must VHF-FM equipped vessels Monitor at all times when the vessel is at sea. B. Channel 16. 2. What is the aircraft frequency and emission used for distress communications? D. 121-500 megahertz. A3E. Question 3. What VHF channel is used only for digital selective calling? A, channel 70. Four, what channel is utilized for the required bridge-to-bridge -bridge watch? C, VHF-FM on channel 13 in most areas of the continental United States. Five, what channel would most likely be used for routine ship-to-ship -ship voice traffic? B, channel 08. Six, what channel would you use to place a call to a shore telephone? C, channel 28. Key topic 15, MF-HF equipment controls. Question one, which modes could be selected to receive vessel traffic lists from high seas shore stations? D, SSB and FEC. Two, why must all mf -HF HF, distress, urgency, and safety communications take place solely on the six assigned frequencies and in the simplex operating mode. B, answers A and C are both correct. Three, to set up the MF, HF transceiver for a voice call to a coast station, the operator must C, select J3E mode for proper voice operations. Four, MF slash HF transceiver power levels should be set A, to the lowest level necessary for effective communications. Five, to set up the MF slash HF transceiver for a telex call to a coast station, the operator must B, select F1B mode or J2B mode, depending on the equipment manufacturer. Six, what is the purpose of the receiver incremental tuning, RIT, or clarifier control? A, it acts as a fine tune control on the receive frequency. Key topic 16, MF-HF frequency and emission selection. Question one. On what frequency would a vessel normally call another ship's station when using a radio telephony emission? B, on 2182 kilohertz or channel 16, 
unless the station knows that the called vessel maintains a simultaneous watch on another intership working frequency. Two, what is the MF radio telephony calling and distress frequency? C, 2182 kilohertz. Three, for general communications purposes, prepared frequencies are D, normally used with public coast stations. Four, what emission must be used when operating on the MF distress and calling voice frequency? A, J3E dash single sideband telephony. Five, which of the following defines high frequency ITU channel 1212? C, the 12th channel in the 12 megahertz band. Six, for general communications purposes, simplex frequencies are D. Both A and C are correct. Key topic 17, equipment tests. Question one, what is the proper procedure for testing a radio telephone installation? B, transmit the station's call sign followed by the word test on the frequency being used for the test. Two, when testing is conducted on 2182 kilohertz or channel 16, testing should not continue for more than blank in any five minute period. D, 10 seconds. Three, under GM DSS, a compulsory VHF dash DSC Radio telephone installation must be tested at what minimum intervals at C? A. Daily. 4. The best way to test the MF HF NBDP system is D. Initiate an ARQ call to the coast station and wait for the automatic exchange of answer backs. 5. The best way to test the InMarsat-C terminal is A. Compose and send a brief message to your own InMarsat-C terminal. 6. What may you test? When may you test a radio telephone transmitter on the air? C. At any time, except during silent periods, as necessary to assure proper operation. Key topic 18, equipment faults. Question one, under normal circumstances, what do you do if the transmitter aboard your ship is operating off frequency, over modulating or distorting? C, stop transmitting. Two, which would be an indication of proper operation of SSB transmitter rated at 60 watt PEP output? B, in SITOR communications, the power meter can be seen fluctuating regularly from 0 to 60 watt relative output reading. 3. If a ship radio transmitter signal becomes distorted, C. Cease operations. 4. What would be an indication of a malfunction on a GMDSS station with a 24 VDC battery system? A. A constant 30 volt reading on the GM DSS console voltmeter. 5. Your antenna tuner becomes totally inoperative. What would you do to obtain operation on both the 8 MHz and 22 MHz frequency bands? D. Bypass the antenna tuner. Use a straight whip or wire antenna approximately 30 feet long. 6. Which of the following conditions would be a symptom of malfunction in a 2182 kilohertz radio telephone system that must be reported to the master, then logged appropriately? B, no indication of power output when speaking into the microphone.